are recapping Bridgerton season three. This is episode five. A newly engaged Penn and Colin go and tell his family all about the engagement and everybody's psyched except for Eloise who is now officially in a shitty position, capital S, capital P. And as always with Eloise, I do see her point, but I also invite her to consider somebody else's mindset for five seconds. She asks Penn, how long have you had feelings for him? That's her best friend. Marina knew in 10 seconds. Eloise, come on, come on, come on. You gotta stop shitting on other people's interest in embroidery and start paying attention. But she does have a really good point, which is the fact that Colin does not know that Penn is Lady Whistledown and therefore he cannot truly love her until he knows her properly. Whistledown announces the engagement and everybody in the town is a buzz, especially Penn's family. <laughs> Imagine finding out that your daughter is engaged on Dumois. Not that Portia doesn't deserve it. The Queen is worried that Whistledown is gonna read her for filth for dropping the ball with Francesca and the Marquis, but nothing comes of it. It's just a perfectly pleasant issue, probably because the author is currently in a post pitbull fingering haze of joy. Kate and Anthony are expecting a baby. News that makes Anthony they make this face but when they go to announce Anthony is a little pissed that Colin stole his thunder you kind of stole my thunder back in the Winchester mystery house I mean the Cowper's house of horrors Eloise is venting to Cressida who's like dude some people have real problems okay and there's people that are dying and Cressida might be a bitch but she knows all about real problems her parents are gearing up to marry her off to an ancient mean man Speaking of people who are definitely a bitch but make good points, Lady Featherington has a point here. Their family's relationship with the Bridgertons is tense, and frankly, she is right. Colin's proposal does seem a little impromptu. He overhears all this though, and he shows up and is like, listen lady, I'm gonna take your half a virgin daughter to a whole different house by ourselves, cause that's allowed, because the episode says so today. But he does stand up for her, which is really, really sweet, and Penn is so moved. He takes her to show her their future home, it's real nice. He starts uncovering furniture, and he covers this settee and I'm like okay that is Chekhov's settee. It's gonna go off at some point if you know what I mean. Pitbull's gonna start playing any second if you get my drift. And I'm correct! I wonder if predicting sex furniture is a marketable skill because if so I am switching careers. Real talk though this scene was so sweet it was so perfect they did it so well and I would just personally like to thank Nicola Coughlin for representing the perfect breast community so well. By the way after they pitbull a few times and asks Colin if she looks a mess and he's like yeah you do. <laughs> but you're my mess. <laughs> Not the negging. Is the mess in the room with us right now? Hi, she's perfect. Our favorite little neuro spicy sexual orientation question mark is enjoying her flirtationship with Lord Kilmartin. Lady Danbury is once again crushing the hat game. Is this one a little the crucible? Yes, and it's fierce. The queen is delighted that Whistledown seems to have lost her teeth and she takes the opportunity to release a little zine of her own, offering a 5,000 pound reward for anyone who can unmask Whistledown, which obviously Penn is pressed about. We meet Cressida's betrothed, who is basically Terence Stamp's Butler character from the 2004 Disney Haunted Mansion movie. Yeah, he sucks. We don't like him. No music, no fun clothes. You may wear only brown, only one ball a month. You know, it's giving Oliver Cromwell on a budget. It's not cute. And he, this old bastard, wants four or five children. Charlie Chaplin had babies when he was 73. <laughs> Yeah, but he was too old to pick him up. You can already see the cogs turning in Cressida's head about how she can get him to the top of a very long staircase, but before she jumps straight to Meriticide, she considers another option. The Whistledown Reward. The Mondridges are still dealing with the stress of whether or not to give up their club now that they've joined society, because no one's showing up anymore and it's a drag. Plus, he's missing all of his children's milestones when he has the opportunity to live a life present with his family. I'd just like to say thank you to Netflix, because I really love these characters, I love this family, and I'm happy that they have something to do this season. At the engagement party, Cressida is a appropriately dressed like a sparkly bisexual flag. Happy Pride! Also, she's wearing her own hair as a bow, which I just, look at it. Colin is like, listen, I don't like Rosetta Cowper, but I'm actually glad she's here because that means she can watch you like win, Pen. And this is what I knew that these two messy bitches are meant to be. They will gag for the drama together for as long as they both shall live. Lady Danbury is still salty that her brother and Violet have this like Sam and Diane will they won't they thing going on. And Eloise issues an ultimatum. Not very not like other girls of you, Eloise. She tells Penn that she has until midnight to reveal the truth to Colin or she's gonna do it herself. And to be honest, I get it, she's in a shitty position. Then they all go to play charades, which no they don't. I've never felt so gaslit by this show. They were like, let's go play charades. And then they went in a room and read punny riddles to each other. I don't know what that is, but it's not charades. In a scene that did in fact make me cry, Lord Kilmartin bonds a little bit with Francesca's family and he like expresses his affection for her. It's, it's really sweet. I didn't read the books, but I really wish I'd spent less time on the internet and didn't know what happens to this guy. Y'all are out here breaking my heart on every social media platform. I love 
pen, but as usual, she is doing the absolute worst job concealing the fact that she is Lady Whistledown. <laughs> While she's in a closet having a panic attack, the others discuss the perks to being an unmasked Lady Whistledown. No one's gonna wanna marry you, so that stress is off the table and you have your own income and infamy and stuff like that. And Cressida sees dollar signs, baby. So just as Penn is about to tell Colin the truth, and just as Kate and Anthony are gonna announce that they're having a baby, Cressida takes the stage and says, It's me! Have I mentioned that this season is wicked? Pen faints, press it a drinks, and we all collectively press play on the next episode because shit's getting juicy. Thank you so much for watching, and if you can, please consider donating to the Ashore Families Fundraiser. It's the top link in my uh, link tree, and we're raising money for a family with a disabled child to escape Gaza, get to safety, get his medical treatments back on track. So please, please, please consider donating. Let me know in the comments if you did. I love you forever. I'll see you tomorrow.